Yo, what up guys, Marin here, and today I'm gonna be doing a deck tech on my beloved patron of the Arachi deck. So, a little backstory on this deck. So, when I went to Magic Fest Las Vegas, I was intending on using my Tatiova Benthic Druid deck because, well, it's my CEDH deck. Um, but when I went there, I found out that they had changed the prize structure and you no longer get anything for winning commander. So everybody gets the same amount of ticks no matter what, so everybody was able to bust out their casual decks and just have a bunch of fun. And a week prior to Vegas, I had built this patron of the Arachi deck casually. I brought five decks with me to GP Vegas, and I was able to optimize the heck out of Patron of the Arachi there. I got some good deals from some vendors, and I really put in the work with this deck, and this deck was a lot of fun, and out of all five decks I brought, I ended up playing Patron of the Arachi the most, and it was just like, man, this deck became like my new favorite deck. It was so much fun. I just had to do a deck tech on it today because I feel like this deck is just as good, maybe better than an Azusa Lost But Seeking deck. I know that sounds hard to believe, but seriously, this deck worked out well. If I had to estimate my record with this deck, um, I would say I probably played somewhere between 30 and 40 rounds with this deck, and I only lost like four games, maybe five. And I beat some pretty serious competitive decks too. This deck just goes off. I mean, it's not like it's not like your 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 ten power, um, you know, like win on turn three or four deck, but it is just like it's so dang consistent and can win on like turn five or six, and it's just a lot of fun. So I wanted to show it to you guys today. So uh, before we get into it though, I wanted to give a couple honorable mentions. If you are going to bring this deck to a um, competitive, more competitive based scene, I would recommend using some more staxy pieces like City of Solitude um, that to, prevents counter spells. You could also use Dose in the Falling Leaf if you have that. Uh, you can use effects like um, Godfrey's Statue to be able to tax your opponent so that they can't combo off. You can also use other things to do that, you know, like uh, Sphere Resistance, uh, Trinisphere, and things like that. You can use Hollow Gemstone to like uh, make your opponent's mana awkward and like Void One Word to prevent them from casting like half their deck. So if you're going to go in a more competitive scene, I would recommend using a little bit of stacks pieces here and there like that. And one last thing I wanted to shout out is I, I like think I completely optimized the deck, except I'm missing one card and that is Scroll Rack. I will be getting one next week probably. Um, so if you have one of those, toss it in. Otherwise, I guess that's about it. So we can head right into the deck tech and... Um, I encourage you to try this deck out. If you're an EDH connoisseur and you like to build all kinds of decks and you're skeptical, I encourage you to build this and try it out because you will have a great time. So let's snap right to the deck tech. All right, so here we go. Patron of the Arachi is eight mana for a seven seven. And we already talked about this in the intro, but untap self force and green creatures use this ability only once per turn. So it can untap and just go attacking itself. We're not really using this guy for attacking. He's not really the main focus of the deck, but he does help out a lot. So the first main focus that you want to do when you start the game is just ramp, land ramp as much as you possibly can to ramp out one of your mana doublers as quick as you possibly can. So we're going to start right off with our land ramp. Uh, we want all of our land ramp to be one, two, three, or four mana. Anything else is too slow because we want to be a little bit more competitive than that. Like this deck isn't completely casual. So circuit is route, four mana fetches two lands. Nature's lore, two mana fetches one forest untapped. Explosive veggies fetches two basic lands tapped. Gaia's Touch allows you to play an additional forest per turn, and then you can end up sacking it to make two green mana. So this can help ramp you really quickly into one of your mana doublers or into Patron of the Arachi. Then we got Cultivate, fetches two lands, one into play and one into hand. Ranger's Path fetches two forests for four mana into play tapped. Exploration allows you to play an additional land per turn. Kodama's Reach, same thing as Cultivate, two lands, one to hand, one to the battlefield. Explore is a cantrip that lets you play an additional land, and we do have a bunch of lands. Rampant Growth fetches a basic for two mana. Three Visits fetches a forest untapped for two mana. And Sakura Tribuilder for two mana is basically a Rampant Growth, fetches a basic tapped. Colony Heart Expedition, whenever a land enters, you put a quest counter on this thing, and once it has three quest counters or more, you can stack it to fetch two basics into play tap. So it's a way you're going to get this off, you just ramp like crazy. 
Thalus Realms can help you go off without a mana doubler. So this is kind of like a mana doubler because for seven mana, you double the amount of lands you control. So for each land you control, you fetch another land and put it into play tap. So that's uh, effectively just doubling your mana. So really insane bomb to get off. Hunting Wild fetches two forests into play tapped for four mana. Oracle of Moldiah lets you play with the top card of your library revealed, and you can play lands off the top of your library and lets you play an additional land per turn, so it's kind of like an exploration on a stick while also getting a card advantage off the top of your deck. Sky Shroud Claim fetches two forests untapped for four mana. Nissa's Pilgrimage fetches two forests, one into play, one into hand, but if you have Spell Mastery, which you likely will, it fetches three forests instead. Early Harvest, for three mana, it untaps all basic lands you control, and all of our lands are basic lands. So just uh, it's kind of like a mana doubler just for a turn. Uh, this can help you when you're starting to combo off, once you have your mana assembled and you're starting to do many things. Uh, this is just a nice thing to just keep going off. And then we have a few more round spells that are not land searchy spells. Uh, these are the best mana rocks in Commander, in my opinion. Uh, Solary Mana Crypt and Mana Vault. All add two, except Mana Vault adds three. Uh, this is just to give you a nice solid boost up to your mana doublers quickly. And then we have on to the mana doublers. Gauntlet of Power. Uh, when it enters, you name a color and lands people tap of the chosen color or the basic land of the chosen color taps for an additional. So we want to like ramp our lands like crazy and then end up making them tap for multiple so that we have just like a million mana. So that's a doubler. Uh, Zendikar Surgeon, that first ability is, uh, or the second ability is not as relevant, but we want to just to double our mana. Um, Cage Sun, we name a color and our mana of that color is doubled. Extra Planar Lens, we will have to exile a forest when it enters, but that is fine because our mana is going to be doubled for three mana. That's pretty crazy. Uh, Vernal Bloom also helps everyone. It's whenever a forest is tapped, its controller adds an additional green, but that's going to help us ramp into Patient of Arachi on like turn three or four. Um, so it's pretty good. And then Vorn Clex is not only a stacks piece because people's lands will not untap after they tap them, but it also doubles your mana. And then a mana reflection is the most insane doubler because for example, like if we have, where is it? If we have say a cage sun out um, and say we also have a gauntlet of power out. So lands will tap for an additional two, right? So your lands will tap for three total, but then if you have a mana reflection, they're gonna tap for six total because it just makes your lands or makes your permanents tap for twice as much. Even your mana rocks like Soul, Soul Ring will tap for four. Um, so yeah, that's insane. Cause if we have like even one uh, mana doubler out and then we play a mana reflection, we uh, our four is tap for four mana. It just doubles the amount. If this wasn't here, they tap for two and then just they tap for four. So that's the best doubler in the deck. So after we assemble our mana like crazy ramping super hard like that, and we can do a million things, uh, it helps to give Patron of the Urachi haste. So we got Concordant Crossroads and Lightning Greaves um, to have Patron of the Urachi have haste right when he comes into play. And then we cast him, and then we get to untap all of our lands, and then we want to use our card advantage to do lots of things. So before we go over our bombs, let's go over our card draw spells. So since he's Divining Top lets you pay one mana, this second ability is not as relevant, but it lets you pay a mana to look at the top three cards of your library and put them back in any order. And this is a very good effect in a deck where you're fetching a lot. And in our case, in the early turns, we're fetching pretty much every single turn. So we're just gonna always draw what we want. Uh, Lore Seeker Stone, because mana is no issue, six to drop, uh, three to tap it and draw three cards. We're gonna be able to activate this with no problem at all once we get a mana doubler out and just draw a bunch of cards, keep Ancestral every turn. Uh, recycle, I will put an English copy, I'll move this to the side so I can put an English copy up on the screen right now. Six mana enchantment, skip your draw step, your maximum hand size is two, and whenever you play a card, you draw a card. This is like the most insane card advantage bomb in the deck, because once you have like your mana doubler and all of your lands out, uh, then you have recycle and you just go off. You just play card after card after card after card, and then you just like play like half your deck. Um, Tireless Tracker is whenever land enters, you make a clue, you start cracking clues to draw extra cards. Uh, Sylvan Library is meant to be paired with Abundance. Now, I actually just put Abundance in and I haven't played in an actual game with it yet, but I'm, I wanted to put it in to try it with Sylvan Library. 
So Sylvan Library lets you draw two additional cards per turn and then you have to put two of them back unless you pay four life for each card that you want to keep. But uh, Abundance is a replacement effect. If you would draw a card and instead you choose land or non-land and you reveal cards in the top of your library until you get the chosen type and put it into your hand. So Sylvan Library lets you draw two an additional and you would have to put two back normally, but Abundance replaces that unless you just draw three cards of any kind you want off the top. So it's just a pretty nuts little two card combo there. And then Mind's Eye, once we assemble a bunch of mana, we just draw whenever an opponent draws, so we just get like a million cards in hand before we untap, and then we go off. A Seer Sundial, whenever a land enters, we can pay two. If we do, we draw a card. Uh, Miri's Guile is the same thing as Sensei's Divining Top, because whenever, um, at our upkeep, we get to rearrange the top three cards of our library, and one we're fetching away every single turn is just making it so that we get to see three fresh new cards every upkeep and get to uh, choose exactly what we want. Tower of Fortunes, again, because mana is no issue at all. Uh, tap 8 to draw 4 cards. Let me fix the camera angle a little bit. Um, so that is like no mana at all once we have a doubler out in all of our lands. Uh, so that we just get to draw like 4 cards per turn. And then on to uh, our... This is not card advantage, but it is just like, give us whatever we want. Uh, so these are all tutors. Planar Bridge, Planar Portal, and Ring of Three Wishes. I'll put an English copy up on Ring of, of Three Wishes really quickly so you guys can see what it does. But basically all these three cards, what they do is you can pay an amount of mana and they just go tutoring for any card. It's like a demonic tutor. You just literally pay some mana into it and in this deck, Mana is no issue. You're going to make a billion mana. And so you can just specifically tutor for whatever you want with these cards. So you can just find your combo pieces and just win. So after we get all of our mana assembled, it'd be nice to get one of those. Um, so on to one of our first combos. I didn't arrange this properly before starting, but I will find it real quick. So there's two combos. Okay, here we go. Uh, Earthcraft is one of the combo pieces of the deck. So Earthcraft says whenever you can tap it on creature, tap an untapped creature to untap target basic land. And so with Ant Queen, what that is going to do is if we have a mana doubler, so our, our forest tap for more than one mana, uh, we can tap that to make an insect with Ant Queen and use Earthcraft to tap that ant we make to untap a basic. And then we can just infinitely just make ants. And then Patron of the Arachi will come in and untap them and you can just go attacking like if you have concordant crossroads out or something and then squirrel nest is the classic combo with earthcraft so you enchant a land and it can tap to put out a one one squirrel uh, and then you tap that squirrel to untap the land that is uh, enchanted with squirrel nest because of earthcraft and then you just make infinite squirrels so that is the earthcraft shenanigans combo so once we get our mana and then we get one of those searchy effects like these uh, we can search for the combo pieces that we need here and just go infinite and then on to the rest of our bombs. Tooth and Nail is a good one to pair with Avengers, Endicar, and Regal Force. Uh, if you want it to be a little bit more competitive, you can also throw Void Winnower and Nullstone Gargoyle into your deck. And um, those are things that you can use to just basically lock your opponents out of casting spells um, because Void Winnower makes them un unable to, ca to cast even spells. And then Nullstone will counter the first spell or the first non-creature spell they cast each turn. So basically uh, what you're going to do is just make them unable to cast spells. But what we got going on in here and the even more friendlier but still really busted version of this deck is Avengers Endicar is going to enter and make a whole bunch of tokens and we stack that before um, Regal Force so that we get to draw a billion cards and just keep playing the rest of our deck and going off with all of our mana. So if you didn't know, you can search for two creatures, reveal them and put them into play. Um, so that's a thing you can get. Uh, another thing you typically search for is Vorinclex if you want to double your mana or you can get Ant Queen if you have your Earthcraft. So that's those are things that you want to do. And then after that, Genesis Wave is one of the next bombs of the deck um, to help us like either, it's like in this deck, it's either we're gonna win with uh, Avengers and a car, the Earthcraft combo, or the next thing that's coming up. And Genesis Wave just helps you find so much stuff, so much mana doublers, so much lands, and they enter, the lands enter untapped by the way, and then you just keep, get to keep going off. And then the last win con of the deck is Gelatinous Genesis because you can pump a billion mana into it. So XX, you put out XXX green ooze creature tokens. For example, we pump 21 mana into this, which for this deck, 21 mana is not even that much. We usually make like 60 mana in a single turn. Um, so if you pump 21 mana into it, you get 10, 10, tens. And then you just have like a concordant crossroads out or you just wait a turn and then just everybody dies because you have a hundred power on the board. Um, so that is 
is the other win con of the deck. So the three combos are the th only three like win cons that we got in here are just like these three things, but it works, dude. You make so much mana and draw so many cards and just loot through your deck and you'll find one of your win cons and somebody's gonna die. And then uh, the last thing we have that didn't fit in with any other categories was our interaction. So Force of Vigor lets you destroy up to two artifacts and enchantments and the Nature's Claim destroys another artifact and enchantment just because most EDH decks would like to have um, naturalized effects in them because they're very important. And then Song of the Dryads is the best removal spell in Commander. Enchanted Commander, they can get their commander back until they somehow kill song of the dryads not even a sack outlet lets them get their commander back so it also deals with anything it's even a naturalized effect it just song of the dryads does it all that's why the card's like ten dollars definitely needs a reprint and so that is basically the deck if you wanted to go i probably said this in the intro but if you wanted to go a little bit if you're in a competitive environment uh you definitely want to put in a little bit more stacks pieces like um for example um hall of gemstone God Pharaoh statue, uh, the Void Winnower, Nullstone Gargoyle, Congo thing off tooth and nail. Uh, there's just little stacks pieces here and there that you can throw in. And like I said earlier, we do have 44 lands. They're all just basic forest, just all. Because when you have your mana doublers, they only work when you name like green mana or whatever. So, or they only work for like basic lands. Some of the, the mana doublers only work for basic lands. So we want all basic lands. I used to have Blighted Woodland and uh, Myriad Landscape in here, but they screwed me over too many times. Whereas I just wanted them to be a forest so that they could work with my mana doublers. So that is basically the deck. So let's head on over to the outro. And that about wraps up the patron of the Arachi deck tech. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button if you did. And if you had any questions about the deck or any suggestions for the deck, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd be curious to see either. So I know there's different things you can run like team or saber tooth combos and whatnot. If you have any good suggestions for those, throw them out there as well. Uh, there's been a lot of things that I have tried for this deck because, um, and there's a lot of difficult cuts I have made for this deck because it's very difficult to make uh, cuts for decks that you have fallen in love with. So uh, uh, the deck's been through a lot of changes, but I'm open to suggestions. So throw them out there and any questions if you have them. So that's about it. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video. He's out.